This episode of Inside the Architect and Designer Awards is sponsored by Design in Detail. For more than 15 years, Design in Detail has been the go-to resource for designers, offering an exclusive array of furniture, fabric, wall covering, lighting, and carpets. At the showroom in Maplewood, every corner is filled with inspiration. Design and Detail's commitment to excellence means they only carry the very best vendors in the industry, ensuring that every piece in the collection sparks your creativity. Whether you're designing a cozy corner or an entire space, let Design and Detail be your starting point. Visit designanddetailstl.com to get started today. Megan Heater, welcome to Inside the Architect and Designer Awards mini series. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's so nice to see you, and I'm excited to talk to you about your rustic retreat project, which won for historic residential renovation as well as for vacation home. Um, Let's start with a description of the property because it is very unique and beautiful. What can you tell me about it? So this is a magical little property. Well, not little. It's 100 acres. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's in Augusta, Missouri. It's down a long private gravel road drive. Um, and the setting is just exquisite. It's on a gorgeous lake. Um, it's an old historic log cabin that was moved there by the previous owners. Um, it was two log cabins that were put together uh, piece by piece. So it's, it's an incredible property. Truly. And had you worked with this particular client beforehand or are they a new client? So I, it's funny, I started working with this client. Um, I helped them pick a stair runner. <laughs> so many, many years ago, um, that's how we started working. So it started as a stair runner and then it moved to, um, they have a beautiful century old home in Clayton that we did an addition and a renovation. Then we went out to this farm property, but at that time we were working in the barn. We did a really fun, like oh, kids cool. loft uh, for oh, the I kids. Think we may have yes, you guys, you it. did feature yes. it, so it was a very fun kid focused space. Absolutely. Um, and then from there, I've been help. I've helped them with their home in Hilton Head, and now we're back at the farm. Oh, so wow. you just never know. I mean, I always tell young designers when they're starting out. Always say yes. Yes. A paint consultation could turn into a whole home renovation. You just never know where things will lead. So absolutely. And a great partnership. I'm curious to know what your reaction was when you found out that you would be working with these historic log cabins. I mean, that's not something that you hear about every day. Yes, I could not have been more excited. Like I said, I love this property. I I grew up in the area. My grandparents had a farm in Augusta. So I love being out there. It's just um, so restorative. It's so beautiful. So yeah, I I knew it was kind of coming after working on the barn. It was, you know, I talked to the homeowners about possibly working on the main home. Um, So when they were ready, I'm like, let's go. I was very excited. Yeah. Um, And so how did you start? I mean, on such a specific project, Mm -hmm. um, how did you start and where did you start? So I always try to do a little research um, on the home itself. Luckily, uh, we had some good information from the previous owners. Um, But also, I start just pulling together um, imagery from either books or online or just really starting to feed that imagination of what the space could be um, and try to narrow that down. So that's sort of where we started. Also, getting the homeowner's goals is always number one. Right. It's like, you know, what what do you envision? What do you want the space to be? How do you want to function in the space? So that's always 101. But. And, I'm, and so what did they tell you? What did they want? What were they looking for? And sure. did the homeowner have a specific aesthetic that she was going after? Yeah, so the home is so charming, but it is rustic. Mm-hmm. And so the homeowner wanted something that felt a little brighter and lighter and airier. Um, As I was researching, you know, what direction we could take it in, I really was inspired by some of the homes in Montana um, where they have a rustic feel, but there's a rustic elegance with that. Mm -hmm. And so keeping the color palette fairly neutral was key. So that way the 
beautiful logs and log chinking really shines and that's the focus of the home. Um, and then everything else is just peaceful and crisp and light and airy. Um, so she really wanted that feeling. And then also, um, the home has a large covered porch in the front, Mm -hmm. which takes out a lot of natural light. So that was key for the project is really trying to figure out a way to bring in light and airiness into the space. And if I'm not mistaken, it sounds like the window in the dining room mm-hmm. uh, was an addition, correct? So, or Yes, okay. that's correct. So the dining room and the kitchen were separated when we came to the project. And um, the homeowner, that was really his idea, is creating a big, large picture window in the dining room. And I could not have agreed more. I mean, I'm a little hesitant with historic homes to just start blowing out all the walls because I think that's what makes a historic home unique is the individual spaces. And sometimes people go a little overboard with an open concept. You know, you lose some of the character. That was not the case at all in this instance. I agreed hundred percent with the homeowner because opening up those two spaces gave you the view of the lake from the kitchen and it really made the kitchen and dining room light and bright and airy. It was just so perfect. It is just such a beautiful light and airy atmosphere. I mean, when I bring people over um, to the space, everyone kind of stops in that particular spot and looks out at the lake and you just can't help but just look at the vista and be so, so happy to be there. Absolutely. And I know that you collaborated with a contractor Mm -hmm. as well as with a cabinet maker. Take us inside some of those meetings. Obviously, you know, three creative minds. (laughs) Um, How does that work? Sure. So um, every project is a little different. I think because um, I have had such a great history with this particular client, she and I had an overall vision, concept. Um, We had specified materials. Um, and we had sort of those elevation drawings mapped out and in place. Okay. But when you bring on your team, they just make those ideas come to life and perfect them seamlessly. Um, Caroline is an expert at cabinetry and laying out kitchens. And she also has a great design, a great design skill set. Um, and provides great ideas too. So for example, in the wet bar, she had a great idea to um, take the backsplash and make it more of like a molded wood. Mm -hmm. That was so interesting. And she just comes up with great suggestions like, oh, why don't we adjust the shape of the island a little bit? And so she really takes your ideas and perfects them and makes them incredible. And of course, Randy. Yeah, so talented. Yeah, so he's so amazing with historic homes. And he very humbly will say, um, oh, I just do what I'm told. But I know that's not the case at all. He's been, you know, making design decisions for his projects for years, and he's got a great eye too. So um, he really makes makes it happen. And the kitchen really is such a stunner. And I love the detail in, in the color selection. And of course, the way that you highlighted the uh, beamed ceiling. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the kitchen? So the kitchen, I wanted to feel original to the home as best we could. Um, And really the color scheme was, again, that light and bright and airy. The kitchen cabinets are a beautiful color from Fair and Ball. It's matchstick. Um, And then we brought in a beautiful soft sagey green to sort of accent that that. cream color so that's contented from Sherwin Williams Um, but we continued those little accent colors here and there so the lighting for example is from Urban Electric Mm -hmm. um, and they're a company out of South Carolina that I just admire so much they make everything in-house and they have amazing craftsmen and so you can color match the materials of the lighting so we oh. color matched some of the oh that's so cool yeah so that was fun and um how about the ceiling lights so the ceiling lights are visual comfort okay um and with a historic home um sometimes I'll try to avoid you know, it's necessary to have some recessed lighting, but the ceiling lighting that you see on the beams, I think makes it feel a little bit more historical than 
um, your typical modern lighting. So, and then also the detail of the hood is one of my favorite parts of the yes. project. Um, so I was inspired to create this hood after looking at some really cool, uh, furniture, Americana furniture books. And I was right. kind of researching painted furniture at the time. And so I thought this brought a little bit of charm back into the kitchen and, Absolutely. and gives that soft, quiet country feel. Um, so I worked with a local artist. He's starting to retire, unfortunately, <laughs> but he's so gifted. Um, and at, can you say his name? Oh, sure. It's Charlie Blood is okay. his name. Um, like I said, I think he's kind of starting to retire. So I don't know how available he is, but um, he's incredible with with painting and even like things like the back plate switches on the stone. He can perfectly match the marble. He's just oh. an uh, incredible decorative painter and artist. Love that. And how challenging was it to work with the logs themselves? I mean, had these cabins been covered up throughout mm -hmm. the years, as is often the case, mm -hmm. um, or had they been exposed all this time? The logs were actually in really decent shape. Um, you know, it is tricky, and Caroline can tell you um, how they have to work and set the cabinetry into the logs. Like, oh, that's a whole nother level I'm of sure. expertise that, oh my goodness, I'm so happy that they did that seamlessly because it looks gorgeous from the side. Um, but yeah, so they really worked to finesse the logs within the space. Um, but yeah, the logs were in amazing shape and you can see what I love about them is that you can see the hand hewn nature of the logs. Yes. So each ax mark you can see in a row and, you know, people today will take a beam and try to make it feel old or antique or historic and they'll just like chop at it. <laughs> but what you can tell from the real deal is how methodical those craftsmen were. And you see like the meticulous lines right in a row where they've um, cut up the logs. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it is, I can get a little nerdy about it, but <laughs> that's I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so amazing to see history in life yes. like that with some of these projects. And I love the um, the contrast with this very soft, as you said, uh, light and airy mm -hmm. furniture selection yes. that you made. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fabrics mm -hmm. and how you sourced them and, you know, the feel that you were going with, going for with the combination of patterns. Sure. So just because you do neutral, it doesn't have to be boring. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I think this neutral palette perfectly contrasts to the rustic nature of the home. And it makes it feel a little bit more up elevated and, and elegant, essentially. Um, but I always, if I'm working with a neutral color palette, it's so key to make sure you've got some pattern, you've got some texture, that the scales are a little different. So it's more layered and interesting mm -hmm. throughout the space. Um, but I was really inspired by nature. So... Um, I found a really sweet embroidered Colfax and Fowler pillow print um, that had some really cute little foxes embroidered oh, on there. Yes. The Sanderson fabrics have some beautiful leaf pattern embroidery. So try to keep it interesting and still celebrate the space that you're in. What was your biggest challenge? Well, it's always a challenge to work with an older home, always. Of course, yes. Um, but I really rely on Randy and his team to make it happen. So um, I mentioned the lighting. We did need to add some recessed lighting into the primary space. And with that, because of the exposed ceiling, that was not an easy thing to figure out. Um, and even taking the wall down from the kitchen to the dining room, that was not an easy structural thing to figure out, but they're just experts at it and they definitely have a can do attitude. You know, we'll figure it out and we'll make it work. And they just do, which is great. Yeah, you always need those people on, on your team, right? For sure. I mean, for yeah. sure. I'd much rather have the, we're going to figure it out type contractor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and what did you incorporate any antiques or vintage wares into the design of the home? So it's interesting. We actually took out some antiques, which is not typically okay, what I would that. do. But um, I think the antiques are so key to making the face space feel authentic. Um, but in this case, 
We wanted um, to take a more rustic, historic feel of the home and make it feel more a little bit more polished and contemporary. It. So it was the opposite a little bit. The okay. home already felt so authentic. Yes. So it was just a matter of making it feel clean and crisp and comfortable. Um, but we did add that authenticity back with original art, for example. Um, we partnered with a local artist, Ali Yatterberg, okay. um, and she did some incredibly oh, yes. contemporary um, pieces and took our color palette and made them very seamless. So they have a modern feel, but it still feels rural and bucolic with the way she designed the setting Absolutely. Um, and the landscapes in her painting. So I definitely was mindful of the fact that we wanted it to feel authentic, but yeah, for once we weren't adding <laughs> too many antiques to the space. And how does your client use the space? Obviously, it's a second home. Do they entertain out there? They do. Okay. I think this is a wonderful family retreat for them. Okay. They have very busy lives. Um, they're very successful in business, but they also are very creative people. So, for example, the husband has a woodworking shop in the barn here. Yeah. The wife um, does quilting, and she has a quilting studio that we're pulling together in the barn. So more projects, more projects for sure. So I love that about them. And so they're really using the space to gather with family. They go there for holidays or it's just their small, you know, their main family right. um, that's using the space or they're just going there to be creative and, you know, explore their own passions. And so for my final question, which I'm asking everyone, mm -hmm. what advice do you give to another designer who's considering entering the competition next year? Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, enter, enter, enter. Um, I think it's such a great way to celebrate design in St. Louis. We have so many amazing homes and projects and such talented uh, design talent here in, in the city. So absolutely enter. I think if you're thinking about, you know, how do I make my project award-winning? To me, it's really celebrating the project and the property that you're at. So I always ask myself every project, you know, what makes this particular home special? And then celebrating that in your design and your design decisions. So for example, this project, it was the setting that made this home so special, not only the historic nature, but this beautiful woodland view and lake that you have to celebrate. So that was the key focus of the project. So I think if you keep those attributes in mind as you're designing your projects, they'll always be magical, award-winning, and so special and tailored to the project. Thank you, Megan, so of much. Of course, yes. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely.